All right, let's look at product rule, which is what happens when you have two functions of x multiplied together. Keep in mind, they've got to have, you know, x is if it's just numbers, you don't have to worry about them. But it's, it's if it's two different functions of x multiplied together. So let's pretend it's, I don't know, let's say this right here. This right could be like u of x. And this right here, this v, could be called v of x. On well, your formula book, they write it like this. They say if y equals uv, so here, keep in mind, u of x, that like u is a function of x, and so is v. So you have two things, something with x's times something with x's. What do you do to find the derivative? Well, they tell you this, and luckily you don't have to memorize this. You can look it up. It goes dy dx equals. Now, here's how it goes. It goes u dv dx plus, oops, I didn't write it very nicely. Let me just try to fix it up a little bit here. dv dx plus v du dx. This is the official formula, okay? This is it. This is what you get in your formula booklet. Now, what do we do with this? You know, how, how can we use this? I think there's maybe a, a nicer way to do it. Maybe I'll give you like a pro tip here. Uh, maybe I'll just write it down like this. I'll say, all right, so uh, let me see here. So I'll say, see, I just got to get to letters here. So pro uh, tip. And what I'm going to do is write you down a simpler version of it, okay? So this is this is the official version. I'm going to give you a simpler version of it. So um, let's see. I like to say it like this. I say, well, y primed equals u, sure, but dv dx, we can just say v primed. So in other words, take the derivative of v. Plus v times du dx, that's just like saying u primed. I think this is a little bit more compact. So I want you to be able to, no matter how you start, because this is what you get on your formula booklet, be good at recognizing ah, dy dx is just y prime. So you can say y prime equals u v primed plus v u primed. If you get it that way, then you're all set. So to show you how to do it, um, I like to set it up where I actually write down, I go ahead and, and I write down, you know, what is what is u? I write that down. Then I say, what's, uh, whoops. Then I would say, you know, what's u primed? Then I would say, what's v? What's v primed? Then I got my shopping list. I've got all four things. And I just go like, you know, okay, u times v prime. Okay, so this thing times this thing. Plus v times u prime. Okay, so plus this thing times this thing. And then you're done. So let me show you uh, an example here. So we'll have something here like uh, some binomial here. So x squared plus 1 times x plus 4x cubed. Now you could actually expand this first and then just find the derivative. You could have done it that way. Absolutely, that would work. I just want to show you a different way to do it, just to try to practice with this. So we're going to use this idea here. We're going to say that y primed, uh, this right here, by the way, is going to be called u. This one right here, this first one, let's say, we'll call that one right there u. We'll call this one right here v. And we're going to remember that y primed equals, again, you just look it up from right here. You say, all right, so u v primed plus v u primed. All right, because that's what you get on your formula book. So u v primed plus v u primed. It really helps to write it down on a test to show the teacher, whoever's marking it, you know what you're doing. All right, let's go ahead and figure those things out. So I've got to have u first. I'll write down u is, let's see, it's x squared plus 1. Well, then what's u primed? It's just a derivative of that. So 2 comes in front, so 2 times x. 2 becomes a 1 because you have to subtract. Derivative of a constant is 0, disappears, poof, gone. Great. Let's do v. v is 4, whoops, it's a, yeah, x plus 4x cubed. v primed then, let's see, this is like a little 1 here, so the 1 comes in front because of 1. Uh, and this becomes x to the 0, which is just a 1, so it just stays as a 1 here. Plus, let's see here, 3 times 4, which is 12 times x to the power of, and I have to do one less, which is 2. Oops, there we go, like this. There we go. All right, now let's use this. Let's go ahead and use it. So if we have this one here, we'll say that dy dx, which, by the way, is the same thing as saying y primed, it was v ta uh, sorry, u times v primed. So u, which is x squared plus 1, let's multiply all that by v primed, which is 1 plus 12x squared. I have to add to that, let's see, v times u prime. So v, which is x plus 4x cubed, times u primed, which is 2x. Now keep in mind, you could expand this, and then you'd get the answer. I just don't feel like it, but uh, you absolutely could.
So just so you know, at least there's the mechanics of how you would use it. I would argue maybe this is the worst way to do it because this is pretty easily expandable first and you could do it. This is maybe more long. Let me show you another example maybe where you definitely would want to uh, do it right. Like this near woman sitting next to a flight and she had security concerns about the man seeing him write a foreign script. It was a differential equation. Sometimes my genius is almost frightening. Isn't that from um, uh, Top Gear, I think it was? I don't show. Anyway, let's take a look at this. So let f of x be 2 sin x times ln x plus square root of x. Ugh. Now let's first work on just, just this piece right here. Let's just work on that one. Okay, but don't forget, we're still going to have this one to do. So I'm just going to work on this. This one here is going to be u, this one here is going to be v. So I'm going to say then that y primed will be u, how did it go again, remember? u v primed plus v u primed. Okay, so u v primed plus v u primed. I'm just doing this first part. Don't forget about the plus root x here. So let's do it. So I'm going to go ahead and write them all down. So u is 2 sine x. v, however, is ln x. All right, I look it up. So what's u prime? Well, derivative of sine is just cos. So 2 cos x. The 2 just hangs out in front. v prime, let's see, the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. You looked those up on your formula booklet. So that's actually kind of nice. There's nothing else to do. Then I put them all together then. So I'm going to say fine then. Let me just uh, do it maybe in black, yeah, I'll say, so f primed of x, let's put it all together now, it equals, let's see, it's u times v primed, so u, which is 2 sine x, times v primed, which is 1 over x, all right, plus v u primed, so that's ln x, that's v, times u primed, which is 2 cos x, but keep in mind, I'm not done yet, don't you dare forget about, there was also this piece right here, so how do I deal with that? I mean, this, I could make it like a little f of x here. The original function, I should write this rational function as an exponent, because that's a lot easier to write it. So it's square root is 1 over 2. That means f primed of x then would be, let's see, the 1 over 2 would come in front. So 1 half times x to the power of 1 half minus 1. I don't know if you remember in another video, I showed you how to do that. 1 half minus 1 is the same thing as saying 1 half minus 2 halves, which is negative 1 half. And then I would fix it. I would say 1 over 2. This is a x to the minus something. That means it goes on the bottom. And I could fix that even and say 1 over 2 because something to the 1 half is a square root. So that piece would then go here and say plus 1 over 2 root x. Phew! This is my function here. This is it. In fact, that's my answer. Because they want to know what's f primed of x. Here is f primed of x. All that, including this little purple piece. All right, let's go ahead and figure out then what is f primed at pi. Well, I just got to go ahead and figure out what to do. Every time I see an x, I replace it with pi. So that equals 2 times sine of pi times 1 over pi. All right, plus ln of pi times, actually, I guess I won't need the brackets there. I'll just leave them like this. I'll say ln of pi. Technically, it's the absolute value, but it's okay. We'll be a little bit sloppy, times 2 cos of pi. All that plus 1 over 2 square root of pi. Ooh, that's going to be ugly, won't it? Now it helps to remember how do we deal with these. I need to know what is sine of pi and cosine of pi. Do you remember that from topic 3, I think it is, topic 3? If we're doing some um, unit circle stuff, this is 0 degrees. It's also 0 radians. As I go across over here like this, this is pi radians. Do you remember that the x value is cosine of the angle, the y value is this sign. So watch carefully here. If I talk about pi, I'm ending up exactly here, at this point right here. What's the x value here? The x value is uh, the cosine, right? So that means I can say then that the cosine of pi then must be the x value here, which is negative 1, because it's a unit circle, this is negative 1 here. What's the y value? Well, the y value is sine of pi. Sine of pi is a y value, which is 0. See right here, it's got no y value. This is the y. Why is how up and down it is. It's on the x-axis, so that's 0. There's a number of ways of doing it. Go look at my videos on uh, trigonometry if you want, but that's at least one way to do it with the unit circle. That's good, because now I can replace. Anywhere I see a cos pi, I make it minus 1. So this one right here is actually going to be minus 1. Anywhere I see a sine pi, I make it 0. See that? So now I've got, let's see here, so 
f primed of pi equals. This whole thing right here cancels out, so that's kind of easy. So I just got natural log of pi times, uh, times 2 times minus 1. So that's times minus 2. All that plus 1 over 2 root pi. All right, let's do go as far as I can with this. I'm almost done, I think. So f primed of pi then must be, let's see, minus 2 natural log of pi plus 1 over 2 times square root of pi. This should be my answer. This is my exact value for the answer, okay? Now this was a little bit ugly. Actually, I wouldn't say a little bit ugly, it's really ugly. Could we do this with our calculator just to check? I hope so, let's see if we can. So I'm gonna attempt to just do this derivative. Uh, let me do it the direct fast way. I'll just do it with a calculator. I'll open up menu and say calculus and say give me the derivative at a point. At uh, x, I want the value at pi. Hold on a second here, I need to know that. I need to put in pi here. Boom. I need to make sure I'm in radians, which I am. All right, what's my function? I want here. So I'll open up a bracket here and say 2 times sine of x. Okay, let's see here. Is that right? Yes. Times, open bracket, natural log of x. Close bracket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, then I have to say plus, don't forget about the square root of x, plus square root of x. Let's see if this works. I got minus 2 point, let's say, oh, 01, let's say. So minus, so approximately, let's try to do that here. So I'll say approximately minus 2.01. Let's figure out then what is this. Let's just do that separately and make sure this works. I hope it does. I certainly do. So let's see, what is minus 2? times natural log of pi, and then all that plus, pretty fraction here, 1 over 2 times square root of pi. Please work. Oh, thank God. Okay, good. So, it worked. Hooray! I'm always worried it's not going to work. It's like, oh, God. <laughs> if I show you math is supposed to work, it is supposed to work. So this big mess equals this big mess. Phew! So this is an example of a really ugly one, but do you notice how you could still do it? You just multiply these two out, and that means you use this product rule and say uv. So this was the key to product rule. I just threw in an extra little piece here just to make it harder. But there you go, you could deal with it hopefully. Right? So that was a simpler one, but basically whenever you see this formula, you can just rewrite it as u v prime plus v u prime. Write down your list of u u prime, v v prime, and just, this is like your Christmas list, so to speak, shopping list. Just go shopping, just go find those and put them in here. There you go.